Alrighty, Mr. Gatekeeper here. On this beautiful uh, morning at 2 o'clock in the AM. <laughs> well, what we have here is a, a two driving four, an, old, an older two by four, it appears. Uh, two twenty-two ninety nine dots driving four twenty-two ninety nine dots uh, twenty-eight seventy-nine. Excuse me, nine dots. It's kind of late here. Well, the first thing uh, that popped in my mind after I seen this amplifier is it probably wasn't going to be a big wattage beast or anything. <laughs> I could just kind of tell with the design. Instead of one thousands on the output transformers, you got six eighties. I've kind of I've seen this design before. It's kind of more of a Motorola type design that I've seen. Um, it's got high wraps too on the transformers. You know, more wraps you got, the more resistance you have. Um, just a few things like that I've seen that was you know kind of odd. It was a little different. Um, the uh, two driver transistors were blown when I received it. So we replaced that with two brand new non dots. A little expensive little boogers at the moment, about $40 a pop. And um, we got it uh, back working, we got it tuned out. We had to, um, we had to tune out the output, as you see. We got it pretty hefty on the output there with three caps, staying good and cool. Um, there was a, just a couple of things of the design I didn't agree with. Um, one of the things were the way the enclosure is designed. It has a uh, fan on top, a 120 millimeter fan hole, and only had like a 60 millimeter fan in it. But the way the enclosure is designed, that fan on top, I don't know, I don't really understand why there is a fan on top because there's really no portholes unless you want to, well, I guess you can call these portholes. But the fan on top is not cooling the heat sink. As you can see, the heat sink is, is actually on the outside of the amplifier. So the fan that's on top of the case on the lid there is only cooling the components. So you don't have anything cool in a heat sink. I don't know. Maybe if that's uh, one of the reasons why the uh, driver section blew. I don't know. I have no idea. That's one thing that did stand out to me. There needs to be a fan installed on the heat sink. No doubt being a 2x4. Next thing was the actual size of the box. I didn't like that well. It's kind of small. <laughs> Kind of small for six transistors, if you ask me. It's uh, it's smaller than my one by fours that I do, two by fours, four pills. We uh, went ahead and gave him a brand new Allen Bradley hundred ohm variable, uh, utilized with a five uh five watt hundred ohm. I always like to use the five watts going to ground there. Just in case they want to turn that variable down so it can handle that heat. Got this 20 ohm right here carrying the RF on out. And uh, actually before I give this back to the fella, I might actually take this 20 ohm off and maybe throw a 4.7 right there. Because that's usually um, you know used to kind of back down the driver section a little being a two, uh, two uh, transistor driver section on a 4. But uh, it really don't need it. It actually needs a little bit more ump, if you ask me. But we'll just have to see. I'll probably try to take that off and uh, go from there. But uh, there was one other thing I do want to point out that I was kind of iffy about. Take a look at this 20, uh, 2879. I Actually, I was able to clean, um, that's another thing I forgot to mention, I had to clean this amp uh, tremendously. This amp was in rough condition. I didn't do a, uh, you know, four hour cleaning 
but I cleaned it up well enough to go around cleaning the components and everything so you could I could solder on the board if I needed to and and whatever but um I did clean the transistors on the uh, final section here they cleaned up real well if you take a look at this transistor right here this uh, collector lead mmm it's about only half of it still connected. I don't know if that was done when the uh, fella built the amp or what. But uh, the amp's still working. The transistor is still working. Uh, I don't like this at all. I mean, it's only got half the lead hooked up. You know, heck, it might be fine. Might go on working until uh, till the cows come home. But, yeah, you know, it may, might not. I don't know. But I, I do recommend, man, if uh, you ever get to the point where you're able to maybe, uh, at the bare minimum, change these two transistors out with, you know, a match pair. Or if you're really able to, you know, just change out all four because of this. And, uh, you know, I, and it, at the super minimum, it change this pill out at least. At the, you know, at the super minimum there. When I change one, I like to try to change two, but you know, sometimes cost-wise, you can't do that, but I don't like that. But, like I said, it is working now, so, solid counts. Um, don't have a massive kilowatt box or nothing, uh, put it on a good solid, maybe 15 volts, hit it with a good, good, decent radio, you, uh, you should build a, you know, keep keep it rolling about 800 watts um i can't promise you that you'll be able to get a kilowatt out of this it's i mean it's just because of the design i don't know maybe the fella designed it to be um, a lower wattage type setup so maybe the transistors will last longer i don't know but it's 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 not a design that i that i go with myself it's kind of more like a motorola type design if you ask me with the 680s and the high wrap on the transformers and everything but uh let's go ahead and let you see how it is uh we all we had to do was um had to install these two transistors those were blown put two uh uh brand new non dot 2290s and uh, suckers are 40 bucks a piece right now so we can get them in there good there we go um so we get the variable those two resistors we um, had to retune the output and um, a message to the fella that owns this amp i i did tell you on the phone you had a kilowatt box here i want to apologize that pacific day i had worked on i think three two by fours if you can believe that and i was thinking about the uh, fat boy one that i had got done with no, I was, no, no, excuse me. I was thinking about the Armadillo 1x4 is what it is. That's what it was. I had worked on a 2x4 and a 1x4. I was thinking about that. So I apologize that, about, about that, buddy. Uh, there ain't nobody going to know a difference of 800 and 1,000 on the other end. But, uh, hey, man, at least we got this puppy up and rolling. At least we're getting some okay wattage out of it, man. I'm sure you'll be happy, brother. So let's go ahead and do the output test now. All righty. The gatekeeper lighting up a cigarette on this guy picking in. <laughs> All right. Oh, All right, so we're going to be putting about 21 watts into it. Nothing. Nothing huge. Uh, four watt, this four watt RMS radio. Let's go ahead and flip her on. Let's turn this variable all the way down at first. Working off our little Motorola power supply. Floats at 16 volts. She'll be dropping to around 14 even with this particular amp right here. 
So that's another way I can tell this thing ain't pulling what it could be pulling if it was a little d different design. Because uh, I, I threw a, a Viper 2x4 on this uh, power supply down here earlier this week. And it brought that dang power supply down to about 12.4 volts, man. T took it on its butt. But alright, this is all the way down. Oh, all right, you got about 560 watts all the way down. Let's go ahead and crank it all the way up. You got a good input tune on this amplifier, though, man. It don't even move the needle. Don't even move it. Show you what I'm saying. We got a 10 watt slug in. Uh, let's see if we can get this uh I mean that needle don't even move, man. Beautiful, beautiful input tune. Alrighty, we all the way up. Let her rip. Alrighty, peaked out about 760. Let you see the voltage drop. Right there, about 14.0. I picked out 780 on that one. One point five watts is giving you about a hundred and thirty watt dead key all the way up. About one thirty nine on that one. Input uh tune ain't even moving, man. Alrighty, so you, as you see it's peaking right there about seven seven fifty. Like I said, up yeah, seven seven fifty, seven eighty, you know. Around that uh, point there, like I said, man, hit hit it with a hotter radio. You'll you'll be able to get it up to eight eight fifty, man. But I wouldn't try to push it, man. You know, it's a two by four. You don't want to drive no export into it or anything, man. But uh, for the design that it is, man, you know, it's doing what it's supposed to do, man. Six eighties on the output, man. To, the electromagnetic field's definitely not at its complete max that it could be. Uh, you know, utilizing uh, using the you know transformers that it's using. Like we got about an inch and a quarter transformers on there, man. You know, hey, it's doing what it does, man. Got a good output tune on it, good input tune on it. It's definitely tuned up good. Well, there you go, my friend. We got her up and working for you. Sorry about the delay on it. We're pretty busy on this cat picking in, man. It's the way we've been staying these days. Have a good one, big brother. Hope you enjoy. Hope it brings you lots of uh, good years worth of usage. Mr. Gatekeeper said it. We're going to get the top on. Let's see if we can't find you a good fan over here to replace that uh, little small fan there. And Get this jug of shit back out to you, buddy. Have a good one, Mr. Gatekeeper. Set it out here in the backwoods of Northeast Georgia. And we just got down. Give a shout out to my boy Real Deal. You know who it is. We gone.